Barbershop Podcast from Hamilton, Ontario, Boxo Studio in the shadow of the Hamilton Mountain. It is Barbershop Podcast. Live original music, some of the very best in Southern Ontario and uh, worldwide. We've had a few international stars come in here. It is a cool, intimate experience. What we do here is we promote live original music. Also known as indie music, uh, stuff that you might have to look a little bit for, but not as hard as you would think. In every coffee shop and in every uh, live music club, there exists a whole culture. And what it offers is an art form as old as time itself, well honored and worth the investment in your time for the return is incredible. What it does for your soul and your spirit been well known well documented who doesn't have a record collection that can mark the moments in their life and time like nothing else the smell of grandma's kitchen when you hear that too well we do that on a personal intimate level we introduce you to uh, some of the people in the game and uh, give you a repertoire as we said 238 episodes that's a lot a lot of music we love doing it here at Boxo Studio. Ryan Cannon and Gary Greenland are the uh, Chekhov and Sulu in there, the Spock and the uh, Scotty, uh, the people of the red shirts, <laughs> the blue shirts and the gold shirts, hacking away, uh, making it sound good, making it look good each and every week. And uh, you can find us all over the internet, Barbershop Podcast. If this is your first show, congratulations, welcome. If you're a longtime uh, patron, and share it. Tell everyone how much you love it. Because you know what I love? Segway time. <laughs> I love tonight's guests. They are a, a great couple. Uh, they've got the, the um, ability to have the past and the present wrapped up into something that is almost futuristic. It is comforting. It is challenging. It is interesting. Uh, music can cover the spectrum and there's a place for everyone and everyone has their own set of fans. You're going to be duly impressed with tonight's guest. Uh, very proud to have Trout Lily, uh, Brent Barber and uh, Joan Kriegsman in the studio tonight. Guys, how you doing? Thanks so much for coming in. Good, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. So you love music, you still love music, because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest, I've done like so many ventures in the course of my life where I had a passion for something and then you pursue it and it becomes your work. And when it becomes your work, it, it loses a lot of the element mm -hmm. that was your escape which <laughs> from that kind of thing. And uh, there's been many trying times doing this show or whatever where it's like music is no longer what it was to me so you know um, i'm going to ask you a little bit about about being in the business uh but let's start with music as it entered you where would where was your musical background start with you brent yeah myself um i would say i was probably i mean 13 or so when i first started like um being interested in music i was just telling joan the other day i guess acdc was the first yep. big thing for me someone my sister actually got it for christmas and i confiscated the yeah, album yeah that happens after, a lot right? doesn't it right you don't like this I like it better than her, right? I mean, so uh yeah so that and then a buddy of mine had moved to england and came back and he was playing guitar and playing acdc songs and stuff right yeah so i sort of started picking up some guitar from him and that and yeah probably not till i was about 16 though but did you did you have a group of pals that you could kind of be bad and get slowly better at at the same time together? Or were I don't know about getting better, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah, a plan. Yeah, my uh, cousin um, Mark he passed away quite a while ago now, sorry, but um, him and I would play together quite a bit, and uh, he was really good, um, really good at learning the songs and the memory. Like I couldn't remember songs, so being able to follow along and stuff was you, like, was always my thing. I can play and follow along, yeah. but yeah. And you really need that, that that's important early on, that mix of personalities mm -hmm. and who's, yeah. who's gonna carry someone else's weakness until you can get up to speed on certain things. Right. Playing gigs, going out and going and, and you know, yeah. send the school, sock hop, that sort of thing, yeah. did you do that deal? 
Um, not till Talent college. Show. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty shy about it. I mean, I couldn't even play. I couldn't get on stage for, for years. I moved out to Whistler in the 90s and uh, we put a band together out then, out there in about uh, 92, 93, somewhere in there. And I mean, I was so nervous on stage. I was sweating and I had to quit the band after yeah. about five gigs. Yeah. We were playing the Longhorn Saloon in Whistler, which is the biggest bar in the town. Yeah. And it was packed. Uh, it was December, right? So, I mean, there was a lineup at the door. <laughs> it's yeah. like five, 600 people. It was too much. Yeah. Yeah. I was too nervous. But I've kind of gotten over that. I always, you know, get yeah. nervous beforehand. I'm well, nervous now. Well, Richard Manuel wrote that great yeah. song, you know, about yeah. it, which is... You know, yeah. stage, stage fright, stage fright mm -hmm. stage and fright. it's never leaves you. And people don't understand that that mm -hmm. comedians can be miserable, and musicians don't always seek mm -hmm. the, the the limelight. You know, so tell me about mm -hmm. your early days in music. How'd you get into it? Um, well, I did play a little bit of guitar, my mom's guitar, when I was growing up. Yeah, you were yeah. saying because yeah. we talked a little bit earlier. It was yeah. uh, it was your mom's guitar it was yeah. sitting. Where was it in the closet under the bed? Where did she stash it? Um, yeah, I think it was on top of the piano, actually. just sat there, but it collected dust for years, and finally I picked up a guitar book that said what the chords were, and I sort of figured it out on my own. Uh, so I played that for a little bit and then kind of gave it up. But then as I got older, I really wanted to start playing music, but I found, uh, again, shyness. I was way too shy to do it. So I started in my early to mid-20s taking performance classes and singing classes Building and just trying the, to build up my confidence, yeah. but it never worked. I mean, I'd get up there and I'd cry instantly yeah. <laughs> you know it was so scary you know yeah. and it took a really long time um and then uh, around the time i met brent he, he sort of helped me uh get my feet back in the water is that how you say that sure. yeah <laughs> get my sure. feet wet again yeah. um i was really afraid to play even in front of him but slowly over the last few years i've started to i'm still lose nervous the fear. Playing in front of her too, yeah right? yeah and, and, and <laughs> yeah but you have to find that play because there's a real when you're giving of yourself and something that is artistic and something that is really going to be moving someone else it has to move the the writer the producer first right For sure. and, and you can imagine you at home someone that's like it was the self-critical yeah. aspect that you deal with is nothing compared to someone who has to take an idea and expand it into something much more than a soppy love note in grade seven which would still <laughs> break your make her make or break your life or your year as far as how that's received uh, and do it in the form of a song and you have to be with people that you believe in and trust right For sure. yeah so uh, what were some of the, the early common influence of the music the musicians that you both loved you know that you were like oh, okay I like them too uh, we're both pretty folky I think yeah. in our heart of hearts yeah, my biggest know? one uh, was Cat Stevens yeah. yeah my hero I guess yeah. in college I found him and yeah that was the first song I ever learned all the way through would, would have been a couple of Cat Stevens songs actually yeah mm -hmm. and I'd and say then, Joni Mitchell for me yeah yeah yeah, and you can carry it for a long time before you start to develop your own kind of niche. How do I fit yeah. in here? Oh, of course. I was lucky. I didn't know. I got in at 18 years old at Reggie's Music. One of the, the mm -hmm. few books I had about was Gordon Lightfoot. Mm -hmm. And I was I didn't know anything about Gordon Lightfoot. I was 18. But I did. Yeah. I bought the, the tape, the Gordon's Gold tape. Yeah. That is like a greatest hits tape. And I just found out magically, luckily... I was in my range, so I could sing those tunes yeah. and, and very quickly. So it's it's amazing how enamored you can become with someone when you start to do their music, <laughs> right. and, you, and you can you immediately become immersed in it. Yeah. All right, we're going to start with a live tune, so you can uh, grab your gear. And uh, cool. as we always do here at Barbershop Podcast, we feature a combination of live and recorded music. We got uh, videos, and we have audios, and we like to do our best to get the live experience and the sound. Sometimes it's a coffee shop or a pub uh, setup or experience, and there's been a few times when it's been crazy, but whatever it is, Boxo Studio gives you the sound and the vision. All right, what's this one called? Uh, uh, this is a hobo love song. I wrote this one uh, through uh, the Dundas Music Club. Yeah, Which, which is Wednesdays. where I started going, yeah, way back when. And that was really where I got started writing songs. And this yeah, was one of the first ones. There's theme nights. Yeah, the, theme it's nights, always yeah. a theme, I guess, yeah. And it's always key. It's like, for me, it's so, I appreciate that when someone gives me the germ or yeah, the sand that the pearl Makes all the comes from. And you're like, thank you. Now yeah. chose the topic. I did. Yeah. I said it's got to be about trains. <laughs> <laughs> I can write the heck out of a hell out of a train, train song. song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this one's called. It's called a hobo love song. Hobo love song, and this is Trout Lily, and this is BarbershopPodcast.com. Oh, this time. 
time and every hope for what this time has spoken these four lines before I do. May I always help you forward all the days that I can count. May I always do what's right and not just what I want. May my love for you be greater than my need will ever be. I love you just the way you are and that's okay with me. The year was 1934 and everyone was deadly poor. A better life was further down the tracks. The bride walked by, the groom a smile, they carried rhubarb down the aisle and burned Love you just the way you are, and that's okay with me. They went 19 years, 100,000 miles. And if it was last to stop the call, he pulled up with a smile. Hobo climb back on the rails, for all I know, she rides, but still left wrong with body propped up near the track. She left for cigarettes and a can of beer I know carved into a railway sleeper wrong Where I caught the westbound home from here May I always help you forward all the days that I can count May I always do what's right and not just what I want May my love for you be greater than my need will ever be I love you just the way you are and that's okay with me. May I always help you forward all the days that I can count. May I always do what's right and not just what I want. May my love for you be greater than my need will ever be. I love you just the way you are and that's okay with me. Ain't no love song like a hobo love song is what they say, I tells ya. Riding the rails, there is a few things more evocative than train. That's why so many great songs, blues songs, songs about trains, great country songs. (laughs) Write yourself a train song one of these days. And I tell you, there are writing workshops. You'd be surprised if you are a novice guitar player or someone who's a poet or dabbled in poetry... I say this to a lot of my friends, you know, they kind of hit in that age where it's like they've done something for a while and they've seen this as something out of reach and it's not really. If you can write and you like to write and and it is tougher to do things when you're older, but you can mm-hmm. learn three, four, five chords. You know, the guitar, especially the acoustic, is a very percussive instrument. Your right hand is like a drum. If you can play the bongos, you know, and you can make a couple chord formations. I've seen people transition from you know, n- complete rank novices to songwriting, to performing within a year. And uh, within a couple of years, when you tell people that they've only been doing it for two or three years, they can't believe it, mm. you know? So it's never too late to learn something. And <laughs> never too, yeah, never too late to have a chappy, chappy, happy, <laughs> a happy childhood is what they say. Oh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Speaking of happy, you'd be happy if you got your taxes done right. Whoa, look at that. That was the worst segue ever, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to get it done because uh, I love Heather over at Taxes Done Right. She does our books here at Boxo Studio, and she does the taxes for the boys. Uh, she is one of those people who is crackerjack, smart, empathetic, completely up to date with all of the uh accreditation and uh, accreditation and uh, courses that are necessary uh, to get you what you need, what you deserve, which is your bucks. If you haven't filed for a bunch of years, you probably would be in for a pleasant surprise. If you owe money, they'll make sure um, that you'll pay as little as possible and uh, make everybody happy in the long run. If you're going to, if you're in the business, especially if you're a musician or someone who's got a studio as we do, She's been uh, working in music for a number of years and knows a lot of the tricks. So there it is, right there. Tax is done right. It is right. It's exactly right. Right. 
<laughs> right there. And uh, <laughs> you get all right, get your taxes, get them done right. <laughs> we got Trout Lily in the studio tonight. We are doing a combination of live and recorded music. We're going to slide over to something that you've done, you're working on. There's a process when you're writing a song. You write the song, you hash it out, you get it to the point where you're kind of happy, and then you want to start documenting it putting it down and even then hearing early recordings it's always wonderful to by the time something is actually hammered out to see the the, the, the progression and i don't want to say it's not always there's just often a wonderful nakedness to the early <laughs> ones that you can never replicate so uh tell us about uh the first one that we're going to talk about is uh little blue elephant and this is off of uh, a children's record right it is an upcoming children's record yeah. uh lynn kittridge fox put to, puts together a, it's called a mighty tribe yep. and there was one that came out already a couple years back yep. um done and with our friend alec bromke there correct ice yes. nine ice nine studios yep, yep. Um, so there's another one coming out, I, uh, the Mighty Tribe 2, coming out probably around Christmas time. And again, it'll be uh, Arkell's, uh, members of I Mother Earth, again, Darva's, uh, Mimi Shaw, uh, the Salads, and Tom Wilson, of course. And he's mm-hmm. also done the artwork again for the cover. And yeah. Little Blue Elephant, which is and my I, I, I on there too. I love the idea because, you know, be it an educational, political, religious, you know, whatever angle you want to get, there's no better way to do it than with a, a song. For sure. And to get kids tuned in and, and loving music mm-hmm. and I I, you know, I listen to mine you know over and over I had kids I still do right yeah. but it didn't matter if they were around or not I love listening to it it's a great <laughs> record isn't it oh yeah. it's wonderful yeah. Yeah. yeah again you're never too late to have a happy childhood so get yourself uh, uh, this record uh, but you're going to hear a little sneak preview nowhere else but right here on barbershoppodcast.com <laughs> A little blue elephant lived in a zoo. His mama and papa lived there too. He loved watching birds when they flew overhead, and he always asked when they put him to bed, When will I fly? When you're older, you can dye your hair blue When you're older, you can get a tattoo You can ride your bicycle straight to Peru When you're older, maybe you'll fly But the little blue elephant, lonely and bored Wanted the secret of how the bird soared He tried jumping higher, he tried flapping his ears But they shook their heads and said Maybe next year when you're older, you can ride a big bike When you're older, you can stay up all night You can stop eating the things you dislike When you're older, maybe you'll fly A wise old elephant, the head of the herd Took him aside and said, this is absurd You are an elephant, give it some thought Stop trying to be something you're not it's true I'm an elephant, he said to himself But I got this dream, I believe in myself I'll fly through the air with the greatest of ease I'm joining the circus to ride the trapeze When I'm older, I fly through the air I'll feel the wind blow through my hair I ain't gonna sit in no rocking chair When I'm older, then I will fly The 
little blue elephant here on Barbershop Podcast. That is Trout Lily. Watch for them. They will be playing Oot and Boot. Anything that's uh, up in the in the in the near future, in the next uh, three weeks to a month that you know. Uh, we're playing the ninth. And then the uh, speakeasy. Place. Yeah, yeah, they're playing ninth um, in the early evening down near uh, Simcoe Turkey Point area at oh, yeah. Cornstalk. Cornstalk festival. <laughs> if it's cornstalk, it's good. This is festival season here in Southern Ontario. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is a riot every weekend. Yeah. We relish our fall. Yeah. So we play there six forty-five, and then we go. We got to pack up straight up to the speakeasy up on the mountain mountain here. Play at nine thirty there. So, So on which night is (laughs) that? It'll be September ninth. The ninth, yeah. Oh, the days are getting shorter, and I tell you, this is strange. I mean, it really was like a year. This year went by really fast Mm -hmm. because I'm looking. It's like the September comes, and you remember, you know, there's certain events that happen every year in September. There's a Something ends and something starts. Yep. And I thought that really, it's old man talking, but I mean, it's really seen it's like so six, six months. But grab it and run with it because I tell you, any day above ground is a good day. Any landing you walk away from is a good one. And I think that's a lesson that we need to carry with us today. Uh, positivity and writing. How do you write? Do you write... Um, the same way, or have you wrote a number of different ways? We write differently. differently yeah. yeah, I do a lot of I do a lot of reading, and I write the words first, um, and I sort of brainstorm, and it takes days to to narrow it down to a, one single sort of set of lyrics. She does like she's got like <laughs> pages of <laughs> lines and ideas, it's like and, panning and for gold. Yeah, 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 right. And, like, and eventually oh, something's got to come out of it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, Myself, Ben's all about no. the music first, I, I think. Yeah, I just generally tend to come up with like a rhythm pattern sort of thing first, yeah. and then it sort of makes me think of something. Yeah, and inspires you. And then, uh, yeah, I go from there. Yeah, I always say there's no one way to do anything, and that <laughs> is the human. That is the human yeah. element, the way it makes music. Why you'll never be able to fully have an AI mm, songwriter, yeah. I don't believe, because there's that intangible. It's like, why did you fall in love with him? Why did you fall in love with her? Mm-hmm. It's like... I don't know. You know it was Might have been something. a mistake, but it, <laughs> it is what was it just is. something. <laughs> All right, let's do another live tune. What do you got? Uh, get uh, loaded up, and because you've got a combination of instruments here, so who knows what you're picking up at any given time? And Ryan and uh, Gary have had to scatter various assorted microphones around to make sure everything's covered. And uh, what's this next one you're going to do for us? Oh wait, I need the sorry. The thingamajiggy, not the watch my call. I need the shit that number that watching my house, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I lost that. Oh, I got, I got to do this too, man. You do. This is uh, sorry, this is kind of a user. This is a strange, intense. strange song. This one. Strange songs are good songs, and no two songs come the same way. You know, I'll tell you that. You may be able to write a couple that are reminiscent and do them in a streak, but. Uh, everyone's got a, they're like children. They truly are like children. They're all different. Some are easy, some not so much. All right, this, what's this one? You can tell the stories of this one, Joe? You this know? will be, this is Brent's story. Is Brent's story, his yeah. song? Brent's story, okay. Yeah, this one's called Circles. And it has actually, the first time it ever was played live was at, uh, and I finished writing it not long before that, was at Cornstalk. Jeez, uh, it's been going on for 10 or 12 years now, and it was at the second one, so. It's an old song that I wrote um, for a CD with a band I was with called Folk Heroes from Space. And uh, yeah, it was more of a reggae type thing, and now it's turned it's into <laughs> somewhat of a circus thing over the last two days. We completely rewrote it. It's, it's, so. <laughs> who knows? It's become odd. Who knows what yeah. direction, why Prepare the wind yourself. blew You'll that way. You'll just have to way. suck it up, everybody. That's right. It's, it's going to be suck. It could blow. It could be fantastic. It could be something halfway. It could be a combination of the two genres. It could morph back like to its origin. Full ring. Ready to go. What's uh, your interest? You got it right here on barbershoppodcast.com.
find a place to stick our roots back in the ground. Going round in circles like everybody does. Next time around, we gotta turn the other way. Find ourselves in big rates and maybe we'll change our fate. Going round in circles. Our friends like so much fashion Going and out of style Going round in circles Like everybody does Next time around We gotta turn the other way we'll Find ourselves doing figure eights And maybe we'll change our fate Going round in circles Yeah, songs, <laughs> stories, they're around in circles and in uh, families, cliques, tribes, um, mighty tribes, um, they've really carried so much of our baggage, emotional and creative baggage over the years. Music is something that um, needs to be supported. And if you have a chance uh, to visit an independent retailer, uh, go look. You can just use that internet and say, um, <clears throat> independent music artist, and insert your town and or city. You've probably got a big list of them. Uh, check them out. Um, they're out there. It is not the goal of so many singer-songwriters to be famous anymore, but to make a living in music. And let's talk about this a little bit, because neither one of you are kids anymore. And like myself, you're going to go through, you're going to go through moments where it's low or where you're dry or you want to, you've kind of had it. What's the longest period that you've kind of put it down? And my friend once said to me, we never quit. You know, mm -hmm. as a guitar player, you, you put it down for a while, but you, but you don't quit. What were, you know, were there periods in your life where music just kind of vanished? For me, definitely. I think not so much for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. yeah. I never knew that about you. I was... Yeah. I, for me, definitely, probably about a, other than trying to sing as a method of getting over my stage fright and my performance fears, you know, but I, I didn't play any music for probably about 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Yet you're acutely aware of how that confidence changes your performance. For sure. Like that. That and you know all that would, the difference. All the difference in the world. And if you can command it, muster it, yeah. the world's at your fingertips. So true. You know, but it's. Not the phony version. The no, real it's got to be right? real. Yeah. What about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I um, I started out playing for probably a year or two and just got dis discouraged. I think at the, in the beginning when I was between sixteen and eighteen, and then I don't think I played again until I was probably twenty. And uh, went to uh, went to college. Actually, I went to OIART, Ontario Institute of Audio Recording, mm -hmm. in uh, London. And uh, I'd worked at a studio in Brantford with Shotgun Music, Solid State Recording. And I sort of really thought I was just going to not be a musician and get into the whole recording engineering. Yeah, maybe sit and in the chair play a little bit here and there. Parts in for people. Yeah, yeah, right. It was sort of because, it was, again, it was the, the nerves, the shyness, the yeah. I'm, not, I'm not good enough. What's the payday at the end so, of the day anyway? Yeah so, yeah, so I don't know. I ended up, uh, but I got back into it and uh, when I moved out to Whistler and that. and. It's beautiful out there. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. All right. It's everyone has a has a story. There are similarities and there are great differences. And I always like doing it. It's my therapy every Wednesday. I get to see a lot of times. Yeah. And there's been some great stories of perseverance, 
a reminder that it's like this too shall pass and this is yet another chapter in a, a long book yeah. you know don't don't count yourself out don't count yourself short in this game mm. all right second song we're going to play off of your upcoming uh we don't even know what to call it yet call it an <laughs> opus in, <laughs> in, the, opus in, works. in works yes so these were just recorded the other yeah. night like quickly with one microphone so it's yeah yeah just wanted Patrick. to have something to rough, share yes sure. rough um, idea of what's going to come up yeah, mm-hmm. and this is going to be great because when we're going to hear the end product, we'll have you back in one day and be able to say, okay. And I love that. I really do love saying this <laughs> is great. where it's kind of traveled. And this song's called Bang Bang. Anything you want to tell us about it? Yeah, it's a uh, song by, uh, is she from the East Coast or from? Uh, she's from Bowen Island in Bowen BC. Bowen Island, BC. Yeah. Sarah Jane Scouten. Uh, so uh, a Canadian songwriter. And uh, I found this on YouTube four years ago maybe and just fell in love with it and had to I worked really hard to figure out what the words were and work out the chords and make it my own and then we finally got to see her play a few months ago in Toronto and Brent unbeknownst to me snuck behind and, and asked her to please play bang bang right and <laughs> yeah. she did and she it was did, yeah. so great well she'll get it a kick so out of this great. I'm sure we'll find yeah. her on social media and well, she'll get to, <laughs> I'd like to throw this on our CD when we do yeah, yeah for sure it should, it's a great yeah, song it should be on there yeah, yeah and this is the kind of support I ask all the time if I get a country band or a blues <laughs> band here it's like who who are some of the, the locals that we would not have an opportunity to hear about yeah. and everyone's got two or three people yeah. say check these guys for out sure. they're great all Sarah right. Jane Scouten, check her out. Yeah. Sarah Jane Scouten, <laughs> bang bang, here on Barbershop Podcast. Well, this is your version of it. Yes. <laughs> Barbershoppodcast.com. <laughs> is Bang Bang. That is Trout Lily, and you are getting a sample of a unique killer band out of, I guess you guys, Dundas? Dundas. Dundasian. <laughs> this is the cultured corner of Hamilton. They will never admit that they are part of Hamilton, even <laughs> well, if they were... I'm kind of out of Norfolk County That's true. as well. Too. Oh, there's been so many good souls from Norfolk <laughs> County coming in here, I tell you. I've wrote that many times, many <laughs> times in the write up Figured before. I'd mention that. Yeah, they've, there's music pockets everywhere. We got big pockets here. Barbershop podcast, a little bit of everything. You do another live tune for us. What's this one called, and what's it about? Uh, this is called TikTok, uh, and it's uh, again written for the Dundas Music Club on the theme of time, and. Uh, 
I guess it's probably around the time I decided I really wanted to more focus on this older jazzy sound and uh, hoped that Brent would come along for the ride. Skiddy <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, right? You love it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Fun's over. Yeah. <laughs> it is nice to make a, a, a signature sound. Yeah. You know, it isn't something that, because people are going to ask you, yeah. what do you what sound, do you sound like? like? <laughs> <laughs> sound like me, damn it. Right. <laughs> right. They sound like Trout Lily. And uh, good to go. Yeah, I just got to tune. Yeah, go right ahead. What's this one called, Brent? It's called TikTok. TikTok, and it's from About Time, but it's one of those great ambivalent time songs, right? Time. Because you can't just make it about time. No, it's it not about time be... at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? You write something. Pardon me? It's about time. Yeah, it's about time. It's about time, I swear, mm. yeah. <laughs> And get all gapoed and capoed and stuck up and stuck down. In the intonation's tune. a little off on my guitar, mm -hmm. so I gotta you squeeze it. <laughs> That's how compensate. You squeeze it. <laughs> all right, TikTok Trout Lily Barbershop Podcast dot com. Once upon a time I was a state of the art Two time loser with a broken heart But everyone says third time's a charm I want to spend every moment in your sweet arms You wind me up, baby, with your perfect face And your hands run circles all over the place You ring my alarm before I buy the farm I just want to spend a moment with you Wasting my time waiting through a month of Sundays Yesterday's a memory and tomorrow's a dream Make my mind up while the sun is still up Cause there's no thought worse than what might have been I want you to know, baby, when I make my vows Forever with me will be a whole lot of nows When the six o'clock whistle blows the end of my shift I'll still be longing for a moment like this Didn't we love the songs of the era where you had to use euphemisms? Right. It really? <laughs> that was a thought of the blues. Yeah. Now it's like people, it's like, oh, you, you can't even yeah. say it straight up. You got to like, yeah. you got to grunt half of it out. And back then yeah. you had to say, oh, all sorts of nasty, oh, wonderful, <laughs> provocative things and make it sound like a day in the park. And that's what <laughs> true songwriting is about. Trout Lily is in the studio. Uh, they're a duo out of Dundas, Hamilton, Ontario, and they got an album in the works. They are here, they're everywhere. Corn Stock, Stock Fest, is that Stalker? No stocking, right? Corn. <laughs> Far <laughs> as I know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like once you get down there, you never know. Yeah, I, had, I had my years in Lake Erie. I come from Lake Erie <laughs> people, right? Oh my goodness. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm always interested to know uh, from guests when they come on what were uh, some of their uh, favorite concert or live music experiences. Uh -huh. Was there like a show that you went to that either far surpassed what you expected or one that kind of hit you at the right time that sustained you? Um, and it could be anything from a small show to from someone who people have never heard of or to a, a big stadium show. Like what about... You so we have one that sticks out in your mind for Ooh. sure. Um, uh, I think it's called the, the Corktown now, but back in the day it was called Chuggies. Yes, yep. um, a friend of mine was doing sound there at the time. Uh, Ken Augustine, Augustine Sound. 
There you go. You got a plug. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I used to hang out with him and I'd do the lights and the cowboy junkies came. Yeah. And they were, I mean, all I did was turn on the blue light and just sit there and... And swoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. this is the most fantastic thing I've ever heard. And I bought their record at the time. It was yeah. called a CD. I wonder if it was a record still. Um, it was called Whites Off Earth Now and it was just fantastic. And I, and I lost it, was, it and it took forever to find it again, but I've got it again it's now. It's really yeah. different. And Michael Timmons is uh, one of the great producers now. Yeah. Toronto, right? And he has that ear, yeah. and that I works with uh, Tom Wilson, you know, who we both are big fans of. Yes. And that's great to keep the music alive. And <laughs> always like working with those interesting cats. Okay. How about you? What was one of the big shows of your day? I don't know. I guess. Um, Did you get how much? Did I you see remember, shows? Oh yeah, I saw yeah. lots. I've yeah. seen so many that I can't really decide. But I always <laughs> go back to probably the first concert I ever saw, which I, I saw them three years in a row, uh, the Beach Boys, mm. uh, in You're Washington, D.C. <laughs> yeah, my, oh yeah, my dad yeah. lives in, uh, the, in the States there, and uh, we'd go down every summer to visit them in Washington, D.C., and uh, they played at the mall. Yep. You know, the mall is actually yep. like the, the giant the tower, yeah. and yeah, the Washington Monument and the Lincoln Memorial, so yeah, the reflecting they'd play, pool. and they, <laughs> they had signs up on the stage back then even, ready or not, legalized pot. Yeah. And there was no people, way. I mean, with watermelons full of booze and coolers. And I mean, I was just a little kid, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't This even is pretty know cool. But it was, yeah, <laughs> I was like, wow, part this of is this. great, man. I loved it. And it was like, yeah, it was like concerts. But suddenly yeah. it was like, wow. It, and there was probably 500,000 people there. It was yeah. free, right? And to feel it, like the power in a crowd. Oh, yeah. It could be sports yeah. or it could be music. You know, but when you feel it, when you feel part of something bigger than you, it's, were, it's pretty yeah, great. Definitely part of it. And mm-hmm. we were swimming in the reflecting pool. I no mean, way. Yeah, everyone jumping in the water nice yeah it was a real, real lot of fun forest <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. well, we'll go back to our little co- pop culture yeah. hang Sorry. ups alright we have another <laughs> tune this is stuff you threw together songs that you've been writing for a while uh, you get an idea in mind you start building and I'm great that I was the kind of the heat underneath the, uh, the you know the pot to get it boiling <laughs> a little bit to record some stuff mm-hmm. this one's called button up your overcoat again harking back to the kind of um f- 30 sound that this is in fact a cover sound. of a very old jazz song yeah. yeah so i think ruth edding may have been the one that recorded it last as far as have you found that you've had to kind of stretch alter your voice and uh, sometimes echo and yeah mimic, yeah know? but the capo is my best friend as well yeah. you know <laughs> and uh and we're working my it out worst enemy. <laughs> yeah. and his worst enemy <laughs> yeah sorry and i know yeah. i empathize with both <laughs> sides yeah. of that i'm so getting much. used to it though. i, I kind yeah. of enjoying it i have to say i'm kind of yeah. being turned well, once you find the root note you're good just don't let go of it all right, button up your overcoat. This is Trout Lily, only on barbershoppodcast.com.
for another Nickelodeon. Now in the Nickelodeon, <laughs> all I want is loving you and music, music, music. It's really good. We should good. do that song totally. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. I just people, and we're talking about a period where my folks were born. I'm like the Gen Xer. My folks were born in the Depression era, and uh, previous to that, it was kind of a crazy wild time. There was a freedom. There was something that happened after World War One. A much smaller version of what happened with the baby boomers in World War II where there was returning soldiers and there was a lot of sex going on. A lot of babies came out and then you had a big block of people who became influential. And when you have them and they're catered to and they are full of youth and vigor, it tends to be about the good times. That's why, you know, in the 70s we had big block muscle cars and rock and roll. And back in the 30s we had uh, big fast cars and, and good music <laughs> and booze and yeah. speakeasies and hot, you know. I'm telling you, that is a good era to uh, delve into if you want to study any form of the great American musics, you know, that make up everything we do today. You know, be it blues, it's, you know, blues based, jazz, blues being spun off jazz, country, like you look mm -hmm. at you know Chuck Berry and how country was a big part mm -hmm. of his rock and roll sound mm -hmm. and then the Beatles picking up on that along with the blues and how it morphs and I never understood people who have guilt complexes or feel that they're not living up to it's like it is a it's like a giant game of telephone that's what music is and you get to, way to put it, yeah. it is actually yeah. you get to you get to interpret it that's your right you know mm -hmm. that's going to no one will sound like you so it's okay to spend some time trying to sound like someone else, you know, but <laughs> it not, won't last. not too much. I spent a while not listening to much music because I didn't want to be influenced. And I didn't learn songs for a long time, even until, like I say, that Cat Stevens stuff. But other than that, I didn't really learn songs because yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't want to be influenced. And then, I mean, it wasn't until <laughs> 10 years ago I realized, well, wait a minute. I need to learn these songs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you get so on. much out of it, right? It's you can, true. Uh, you really do. It's, it's like you need to learn your... Uh, your alphabet mm -hmm. and your, you, know, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, it's truly true, true. All right, uh, playing a live one now, aren't we? Is that what we're doing? Okay. Oh. So I don't know the name of the song. You get to tell me the name of the song, and you get to tell me the story behind it. Because songs don't come from nowhere. Even if it's just a little place, they still come from somewhere. You know, if it's somebody saying, write about rain, see you next <laughs> week, then it came from somewhere. Where did this one come from? Um, well, it's called Get on the Bus, and it's a little more on the funkier sort of side of things, I guess. Um, it was, again, I guess, like, I started writing with rhythms first, right? I come up with yep. an idea, and then I sort of think of what it felt like or what it you know, reminds me of. So, uh, yeah, I wrote this one years ago, but then we've revamped it a bit and brought it back. Um, okay. It's about, I guess... Uh, I'm just getting along and like why can't we all just, just get, get along? yeah get on the bus right yeah. Yeah. let's go for a ride be, be happy nice. everyone be friends and just sort of you know wrap up a sentiment going and right jam a along song about it <laughs> and bring it here on barbershoppodcast.com your mind if you've got the time find yourself a mellow ride when the words begin to flow find yourself an open door walk a little talk a little listen to us we've been talking for days now look a little see a light and get on the bus we've been riding for days now Yes, I made myself this way I can make myself again I cannot really tell you how Only that it happens now Walk a little, talk a little, listen to us We've been walking for days now Look a little, see a lot and get on the bus We've been riding for days now
different place, another name, more of this or less of that, depending on where you are at. Everybody wants the same, to wake up to a brand new day. Walk a little, talk a little, listen to us. We've been walking for days now. Look a little, see a light and get on the bus. We've been riding for days now. Come on now, get on the bus. Come on now, come ride with us. Come on now, get on the bus. Come on now, come ride with us. Get on the bus. Get on the bus. Get on the bus. Get on the bus. <laughs> that was my defined song, if I say so myself. Get on the bus. That is something from Trout Lily. You're going to hear it in the upcoming record. Any working title yet? Anything? No, right. not even close to that no. yet. No. Something to do with eyeballs. We're eyeballs, yeah. We, we might even change the name of the <laughs> There's yeah. a recurring theme that keeps coming back, right? Yeah. yeah. Keep your eyes on the situation. <laughs> well, music is kind of changing all of the time, and yet um, for ourselves, that's one of the big knocks is that people don't explore and, and discover new music. Mm. We do when we're younger because we're trying to fit in somewhere and we're influenced by certain uh, centers of influence and then around the age 30 it stops but people I, be I believe they're just unaware that uh, uh, there's a there's a vein you know of, of gold yeah. there mm -hmm. that there's a, a deep well of there's of, a lot of really neat new music coming yeah, out in the last still five sounds or ten like years stuff yeah. you already That's, like man, yeah. yeah there's some good stuff you I don't mean, it's not like all new music is a new version of <laughs> something it can you know it's like yeah. what do you like already there's somebody who is just like that band like they're kids mm -hmm. coming out you know I'm of a certain age even though my kids are only you know they're young I was a late starter. Mm -hmm. But my contemporaries have kids that are have bands now, and they're digging into their dad's record collections, oh, which yeah. are my yeah. record collection. Yeah. They're playing stuff that, in no way, ironically, <laughs> is hitting home. Like, right. bam, I dig this stuff, right? <laughs> and I'm from the generation that will buy a CD, right? Because yep. I still have a CD player in my <laughs> yep. 20-year-old car yeah. and at home, and we're going to play that. So I, I, you know, I got a nice kick mm. when I saw <laughs> driving down... Barton Street, and I looked, and there was two kids with the, the moppy, same goddamn moppy haircut I had when I was 15, and one had an ACDC nice. shirt, and the other had a Kiss shirt, right. Levi's, <laughs> jeans, the laces hanging behind the shoes about that far, and I just went, Excellent. I'm like, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, the generation is, yeah. is, be, is upon cool. us, yeah. which is a good thing, so, mm. you know, support, uh, I believe in that. Do yeah, so, My kid's... Uh, 18 just turned 18 and he's got a really good taste in music too mm -hmm. it's nice he likes a lot of this the the techno rap yeah. type stuff and that but i mean he listens to like what zeppelin mm -hmm. and yeah. uh whatever deep purple yeah. beastie boys even they know it when they hear it right like, sure. as much as they would yeah. like to separate themselves yeah. it's like when they like it yeah. they like it yeah. and he's always making skateboard videos and putting that yeah. type of music too you know yeah. in it and excellent stuff. <laughs> Well, you're gonna be watching this tonight. Yeah. Keep it up, you know. Keep yeah. it up, you know. Be creative, especially on this interweb thing. <laughs> this is the kind of future that we're looking for. This isn't the big factory job anymore. You're gonna carve out your own little niche in life, and hopefully, you know, why not make it the arts? You know, make life. Exactly. You know, you don't need food and shelter oh, and whatnot. It is. It really is. <laughs> So why do you think so many musicians are so skinny? <laughs> this is what happens. All right, we got one more tune uh, from the vault, the newly created vault, and this one is called Orchids, which conjures up, this is you know, the different. most supple and uh, sensu sensuous and dangerous of all the flowers. Fickle. Um, what was the... Uh, this is a little something different. Uh, a friend of ours, uh, his name is Leo Dragto. Uh, we met him through the Staircase Open Mic a couple years back. 
and he's one of the most amazing song writers, composers that I've ever met. You might want to have him on your show. You might want to have him on Please your show. I think it would be a yeah. really good addition there. Uh, so he wrote a song called Orchids. The first night that we saw him play, that yeah. was what he and played. He was nervous, and eh? he was so nervous. Yeah. And but we were just blown away by this song. And Brent said, "Well, I want to record this song. Yeah. This song is so beautiful." And we got to write down the chords. And and then I've I sat down with it a, a few weeks ago, and I just thought, well, I want to do something different with it. So his version is very different, very different. from this. This is just a yeah, but he a must love bit. it. You know, it's right. so wonderful when somebody and do that if you're if you love someone's songs, do it and say I yeah. I've, I've learned your song. Right. I cared enough about it to learn it. Yeah, well, I've, I've made great. it a little. Uh, I just I sort of threw some harmonies to it, and we'll see what he thinks. Right? You she made it damn sexy as <laughs> what she did. I didn't. <laughs> she did. I swear, I'm Sean Connery. <laughs> All right, this is Orchids, a beautiful cover from Trout Lily here on BarbershopPodcast.com. Nothing we say can ever be mended, baby. Get yourself some sun. Blues in this life cannot be transcended. Sorrow falls to everyone Over desire Under the bridge The sound of your voice Tattoo of your kiss Orchids are blooming again in the spring. Orchids are blooming, my love. Here on the cedar. It's a wonderful cedar-wrapped environment, Boxo Studio. I'm going to give a shout-out to ourselves, Boxo Studio. If you've got a recording to make, if you've got a film that needs a score, if you've got anything involving sound and or video, Ryan Cannon is a hell of a videography uh, expert. He has many videos to his credit. Check him out at Ryan Cannon Videos. Um, and Boxo Studio, we strive to give you the sound you deserve and get you out in the fashion that the people are going to love you as much as we do. And we truly loved you guys. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. It was fun. It was real. I hope, I wish you the best of success. Thank you. Going Thanks. forward. All right. Remember, cool. next week you're going to hear, uh, the living room rock stars in here. Uh, Those boys, <laughs> they a friend of, friends yeah, of mine. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you, it's going to be a good time. And the week after that, we got the Petit uh, Petit Four, and uh, it just never ends. You know, there's so many great people, so much good music, and you're going to find it all right here on BarbershopPodcast.com. See you next week.